Western Pharmaceutical Corporations in China, Business Strategy, by Group 2, Veronica Perez, Hai Zaidu, Teresa Martinez, and Raul Alvarez. Agenda. Part of the topics that will be discussed in this presentation will be the following. Case scenario, decision problem, theoretical concepts, alternative solutions, recommendation plan, implementation plan, and accountability plan. Case scenario background. In China, traditional Chinese medicine continues to be the healthcare model for the Chinese market. Traditional Chinese medicine consists of a holistic and philosophic approach, in other words, the balance between the yin and yang, which is mostly promoting the use of herbal-based medical products. By the year 2010, the Chinese pharmaceutical market was the third largest in the world and was expected to grow by 21.8% by the year 2013. Foreign participation in China is very limited. The current market is made up of 3,700 domestic companies, which is 75% of annual sales. Furthermore, 95% of these sales are low-value generic pharmaceutical products. Case scenario, background continued. The Chinese healthcare system is mainly hospital-based, which accounts for 70% to 80% of the drug sale market. Pharmaceutical companies must sell their product via an already fragmented process, which consists of 7,000 drug wholesalers. The Chinese government is completely overhauling and reforming their healthcare system by creating three distinct healthcare insurance plans known as Healthy China 2020. To add to the level of complexity, there is a hybrid drug pricing model in place to regulate and monitor drug pricing and reimbursement, which is overseen by the Chinese government. Decision Problem How do these Western multinational pharmaceutical corporations modify their existing strategy of conventional high margin and high research and development investment and ensuring their presence along the value chain so that they achieve high profit margins while adhering to the many barriers presented, such as the health care insurance reform, strict drug pricing and reimbursement regulations, and capture the consumer market. Theory and concepts. There are two major theoretical elements. The first one is institutional theory. Institutional theory is a wide-ranging body of work that has had and continues to have a huge impact in political science, sociology, and organizational studies. The second one is value chain concept. A value chain is a series of activities that create and build value in every step of the process. The total value is determined by all the combined value in that process. Theory and concepts continue. Political. Chinese pharma business is regulated by government agencies and the competition is fierce in that business. Current regulatory environment complies an inconsistent institutional environment for Western farmers in China. Chinese political environment often creates regulatory barriers for foreign companies. Government agencies promote domestic companies at the expense of foreign pharmaceutical companies. Theory and concepts continued. Economical. There are tax incentives to attract investment in R&D. Social. Urbanization and rising disposable income of Chinese uh, population is a major component in this process. The Chinese people are becoming more acceptance of Western medical model. As China is becoming more stable in economy, 
uh, increasing social demands for quality and safety regulations uh, as there are increasing of drug scandals are happening in China. Korean concept technological. China has a strategy to become an innovation oriented country by 2020 in Chinese pharma pharmaceutical level. But it compared to international pharma giants, Chinese companies are still small and weak in technology. Ecological. Western pharma companies to utilize Chinese herbs and other natural products in the R&D. There are greater amount of animal resources and treatments uh, for native patients need to be part of the process of um, Western pharmaceutical companies. Korean concepts continue legal. Formal improvement of and of quality and safety regulations is one of the component of legal item for Western pharma companies. The government wants to expand the healthcare coverage, and that needs to be one of the items to be uh, covered. The legal component also uh, covers the objective to maintain a harmonious society. China is an emerging market with tremendous growth opportunities in the pharmaceutical segment. Both Chinese and Western pharma companies can benefit by communicating value proposition and collaborating their strategies and efforts. Alternative solution. Alternative solution number one. Migrate Western pharmaceutical companies into China for research and development. Working with the Chinese pharmaceutical companies will allow the Western companies to expand production and do research that have not yet been introduced to the United States and Europe. Alternative solution number two. Have the Western pharmaceutical companies perform clinical trials on new medication in China. Being able to work with the Chinese pharmaceutical companies will allow the Western companies the chance to perform clinical trials without the restrictions of U.S. laws. The important thing for the Western pharmaceutical companies to remember is not to sacrifice safety due to reduced cost. A cheaper drug does not always equal a better drug. Alternative solution number three. Follow the strategy of Carlos Ghosn to move business forward outside the normal territory. By finding similar values shared by the company and the host country, the integration can be more easily merged. In the same way, adapting to the host country's values can also make a smoother transition. Recommendations to benefit for Western pharmaceutical corporations in China. China's population is projected to increase to 500 million by 2020. This would create a wonderful opportunity for Western pharmaceutical corporations in China. China is also considered an emerging market transitioning into a mature market with changing healthcare systems. The Accountability Plan The Chinese government contribution of RMB 850 billion invested in, in China's health care reform. Government reform is projected to reduce the number of inappropriate practices at individual hospitals and clinics. More competitive distributors and manufacturers would also benefit from the reforming process. Total pharmaceutical sales forecasted are expected to grow in China from 200 million in 2013 to 220 million by 2020, a 10% increase. 
the recommendation and implementation plans of Western pharmaceutical corporations in China. They should follow Nissan's CEO Carlos Ghosn's communication strategy with China's workers. Western pharmaceutical corporations need to consider effective communication of their value propositions to government entities, key opinion leaders, and patients. As Nissan CEO Carlos Ghosn stated, speaking to foreign workers is different. You must understand local cultures to effectively communicate your message. Nissan used China's population explosion to become a key leader in the global automobile industry. The potential tremendous growth in China due to its middle class population explosion again is set to grow at an alarming 500 million by 2020, which Western pharmaceutical corporations can benefit from exclusively. Finally, they must foster the five-year plan within the economy and Healthy China 2020, which will include China's government objective for universal basic health care for all.